great to uh, welcome back with us a uh, woman we had on, I believe, last uh, fall. I'm not sure the exact thing, but we can remember it together. And uh, she has a brand new book out, a very talented woman. Of course, you've seen her work in both a film on stage, also uh, in her books, a new one out, a new novel called Syracuse. We're going to find out about it, and we're joined by Adelia Efron today. Adelia, good to talk with you again. How have you been? I am fine. How have you been? Great. I think last time we talked, I think it was October, when on the Do I Have to Say Hello book. So uh, it's, it's been about eight, nine months. Yeah, my, my children's manners, but this is... It's about a million miles from that, isn't it? Is it is a bit different, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you're just showing your versatility there, from, uh, from teaching kids right. how to do the right thing to writing a kind of a kind of a steamy novel. That's, 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 a, that's a good uh, spectrum to have. Yes, it is. This one's called Syracuse, and I, I never like to give too much away, uh, particularly on novels, but it's, it's basically uh, uh, two, I guess, two couples, uh, and, and I guess, believe the daughter, go away on a trip over to Italy, an island called Syracuse, and that's where the fun begins, right? Yes, yeah, Syracuse is a kind of falling down place in Sicily that is on the Ionian Sea, and um, it's a very, uh, it's an amazing place. It's it's. The old section is all stone because the Romans knocked the trees down in 212 B.C. and never wow. planted anymore. They went to build warships, and that was that. And uh, now it's, a, it's kind of a stone paradise. The ancient footprint still rules. It's these tattered buildings and this kind of amazing uh, central square. And uh, when I was there, I thought, my God, this is the most magical place I've ever been. And about a day later, I thought, if I spend one more minute here, I'll go mad. <laughs> So I knew it was the perfect place. This book's really about deceit and betrayal in marriage, and I knew it was the perfect place to end this vacation with everything. You know, this, these two couples are really heading toward catastrophe, and uh, I knew Syracuse was the place it should happen. So you, you just happened to be there on vacation. You weren't planning on using that as a setting, just, then. No, I wasn't, but I'm a writer, and I'm there, and I'm suddenly thinking, oh, oh, okay, this is it. This is the, this is the place for me. <laughs> and um, years, years before, um, a psychoanalyst said this thing to me that got stuck in my head. He said, what we think of as chemistry is really psychology. That two people falling in love across a crowded room is really each spotting their own perfect neurotic match. <laughs> and that I that just got married to this place, Syracuse, because this is about marriage and how complicated marriage is. And, and one of the most important lines for me is um, couples collaborate, hiding even from themselves, who is calling the shots and who is along for the ride. And that's what happens on this trip. I mean, things unravel in these marriages where people have unspoken deals and spoken deals. You know, it's a, it's kind of a chilling... It's, a ch it's funny, too, because, of course, you know, I, I'm an Efron, so if I'm sure. you know, not occasionally funny, I'm not happy. But um, <laughs> it, it, it's the chilling... It's a, it's a wicked book. It is. So the character, just to kind of briefly go over, the two, one of the couples from New York, one's a writer. I guess they're both uh, writers, uh -huh. right? And the other from uh, Maine. So you get a little, uh, little different. Yeah, from uh, Maine. He's a yeah. restaurateur, and she she runs the tourist bureau there. So they're very different people. Who and and I set them off with complications. And Lizzie and Michael, the New York couple, he's having an affair, which so the last thing he wants is to be on a vacation. You know, the isolation, the sexual expectations, which he has no intention of fulfilling. And Lizzie, of course, is looking for his wife, looking forward to this very thing. So, uh, and with Finn and Taylor, um, Finn in the past, many years before, uh, when they were both single, Finn and Lizzie had a fling in the summer. So there's a, a, a rosy glow on that kind of, <laughs> you know, little summer fling. And they're, they're people who can't quite help flirt with each other. So these these two couples and this child who you don't know her name is Snow oh, yeah. she's 10 and she is is she shy is she cunning do you want to love her do you fear her I mean there she is at the heart of the story and you don't quite realize it as a reader until you get to Syracuse uh, how important she is but when you when you write a, a story like this, uh, obviously all characters, I guess, based on people you've met or somewhere along the line. Uh, anything uh, that, that these are based on? You've heard stories, I guess, people telling the story. You kind of base that on uh, uh, the story on those. No, kind of stories? they're they're 
they're not at all. I mean, you know, when you... My first novel, which was called um, Hanging Up, was a very autobiographical novel. I didn't mm -hmm. know how to write a novel, and I needed to... It was based really on the death of my father, and it's about sisters, so that, of course, I have three sisters, so I know all about that. But, you know, it's now four novels in, and many screenplays, and many other books, and... Uh, even now I really do hatch these things in my imagination but writers are cannibals and you do steal all around you and uh, <laughs> one of the things about Michael and Lizzie is that in their New York life they often make bets when they go out to dinner about who's going to say what or what might be served or you know and they, they in their case there's a sexual payoff whoever wins but I, I knew a couple that once came to my house and said oh we made a bet that you were going to serve pasta or chicken you know he said so I thought they're making bets about us you know I just couldn't believe it and then they sort of said yeah they do that all the time they go places and they make bets about what's going to happen and I don't know what the payoff was by that marriage but in any event I, I mean, it happened years ago, but it's like, you know, a writer, you just collect these little elements and then you, you know, you use them. So then, and I did. No, nothing goes to waste. Story. All right. Nothing goes no, to waste. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> we're always kind of, we're, all, we're, can, we're cannibals. <laughs> but these are not people I know. I mean, no, they're not. Not specific, but based on maybe a bunch no, of things. No, they're not. But, I, but there are things about the world that I'm interested in, like... Taylor and Taylor's relationship to Snow, her ten year old daughter, is it's it's a little excessive. She the borders, they're they're blur the borders are blur, the lines between them. And I know a lot of mothers who I think, you know, are are I don't want to say overly invested, but they, they don't know where they end and their child begins. Right. I've seen that and I've seen also a distrust between mothers and women who don't have children. That women who don't have children see these mothers as absolutely, you know, out of control sure. on some level. And the mothers see them as as being limited people. They haven't had a child. They have no understanding of what it is to to love and worry about a child. So and to have had raised a child. So I think both both were. Lizzie hasn't had a child, and Taylor is is very very involved with her child more involved than she is with her husband. So I played this out in a dramatic way. And so everyone has stress between them. Everyone has things they approve of and don't approve of and secret opinions. And yeah. Name of the book is Syracuse. I know we have limited time today. And uh, again, give out your website, uh, Delia, if you can get more information about the book. Yeah, DeliaEfrin.com. And you can get it on any bookstore, independent, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, wherever you shop. Before we run out of time, I have to say again, uh, one of my favorite movies was You've Got Mail, which you uh, wrote. Oh, thank you. I, I so always enjoy much. that when it comes on TV and I catch it on the cable. you got to watch a few minutes of it. Great movie. <laughs> thank you. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.